Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to go over Calculate Linux based on Gentoo Linux. I'm coming to you from Calculate Linux. And we see my desktop here. Let's go over their web page real quick. This is their homepage, calculate-linux.org. Here's where you'll get your download and start your journey, finding the uh, information out, documentation, Fediverse, server. Uh, you can browse their applications. One thing I noticed here, you're going to get, on a single search, you will get a couple of this, what appear to be uh, similar options. Browse package here, this is Calculate Linux org. Uh, .org packages, list of applications, calculate Linux, list of applications. And I mean, they both can take you to the same packages, but you got two of them. So, I mean, it, it's, you got a lot of options. <laughs> you got a system uh, update, how to upgrade the, uh, for any, actually it's a rolling release, so it's going to, it's going to stay up to date as much as you update it, but you got a good page here telling you what to do and how to do it. And it's so very simple. You run one command CL hyphen update as root, and that updates your entire system. And it syncs it, at worlds it, new use, deep, and does it all for you. Just one command. Here's that system upgrade. You see we got two different pages. Here's the CL update as root. I ran that immediately right after I, on my first boot up. I ran that immediately and it, I got some pictures of that. And let's see. Here's a, it's 836 packages. It's already installed uh, 150 of them at this point. What's so fascinating here, if you watch it, you get all sorts of stuff during this update. You get uh, XFS progs, ButterFS progs, NTFS progs, G-streamers, streamers, transcoders, tools. It's a lot of stuff. And I hope I didn't. No, I didn't. I was amazed when I sat back and watched that. And and what the stuff come in. I'll give you a good example. Uh, on Gentoo, when I would uh, install Parole Media Player, when it came time to actually play a MKV file, it said I needed codecs. Uh, most of the time during that, I can install a VLC, M Player, and SM Player, and that gives me the codecs, but that didn't work on uh, Gentoo Linux, and you might hear my cat meowing in the background. <laughs> but on Calculate Linux, it just it just works. Everything got brought in as it needed. Here's Calculate Linux, uh, Linux the uh, wiki. Installing in console mode, you don't have to do it graphically. You can do it strictly from the uh, command line. Uh, use flags, the same as in Gentoo. Let me minimize this. Let's look at the installation. So. By default, it comes with a screenshotter, a screen shooter, <laughs> and I use that. So this was my first screen, the your desktop. You'll notice right here, though, is Gparted, which indicated to me that they wanted me to partition my disk, format my disk, before I ever started the installer. However, when I did that and had it set up the way I wanted, I could not get past the partitioning stage. And I'll point that out here in a second. So when you click on the installer, this is your first card. You're going to select your language. Click here for advanced uh, settings. And I selected the English keyboard with UTC time versus local time. On the next card, the installation here is the ISO. I clicked Advanced Settings, and I selected the XFCE Desktop, and you'll have all the desktops there if you go that route. I did that because I wanted everything to be specific to XFCE. I also selected the 64-bit processor. Okay, installation time. At, originally, I said use the current partitions, but when I would try to size them up here, 
and go next, I just get red flag after it took five tries. I just quit. I said, all right. I, <laughs> I stopped the installation, opened up Gparty, and created a new partition table, which basically wipes out the whole drive. I started the installation over again, and I selected Erase Disk and Install Calculate Linux. I did select a swap partition and use the UEFI bootloader. I specified the swap partition size as 4 gigs. Sounds extremely low, but it comes with ZRAM, as we'll see later, and it basically matched Actually, it doubled my RAM. I have 16 gigs, and it gave me 32 gigs of ZRAM. <laughs> so I want to point this out, too. I'm going to click Next here, and then it'll give you a layout of what you've done. And if you don't like this layout, use this Previous button. Come back here. Make your adjustments. Go Next. Then once you get this layout the way you want it, excluding the UEFI bootloader, uh, EFI partition because you're not going to see it here. I didn't, and it confused me. <laughs> All right, so I clicked Advanced Settings here, and you can see you could actually use uh, put the boot on a on a USB drive. At least that's what I'm reading there. All right, next I'm going to migrate the network network settings. It's working. Why not just migrate it? That's one less step I have to do. So I click next. All right. So on here, you're going to create a root password. And it has to be, at this point, it has to be 150 characters. <laughs> Not really. But it does have to, I think, 21 characters. And uh, yeah, and it needs to be alphanumeric and etc. Once you get past that, then you're okay. If you click right here where it says Dennis, it will just say guest. And if you click on that, It'll open up this, and you can change it to your name. You can accept these groups, or you can add some groups, and you create a password. All right. Then once you say OK, this is what you'll see in the next screen. All right, audio system. This right here is a very pleasant surprise. I was able to select Pipewire or ALSA. That's the first installation that I've ever had to make that decision, which I thought was awesome to have that option during the install. It also let me select that I'm using HDMI as my audio, and it had, if you drop that arrow down, it would have had my real uh, onboard audio card, but I selected this so that when it, it was installing, that's what it was installing for. All right, next, video. It had already correctly selected the Radeon card here. I didn't have to change it, but I could have with the drop-down menu. I did change the screen re resolution to 1920 by 1080. I left the grub terminal the same, and I, I left the frame buffer resolution as default. All right, now here you can select to upgrade your system automatically here by default it's going to check once every 24 hours for an update and you'll get a little you'll get a little indicator down here saying that there's an update available so i just left this as default and said next all right so when you first get to this screen all you're going to see is start installation and that's about it we click on view options and now you can see what it's actually going to do and this would be the top third of the page here. Next, you can see here it actually shows you the boot EFI. Up until this point, when I saw that, I was not sure. But I felt easy when I saw that. So here's the user, the partition layout, the Radeon driver, network setup, the whole thing. When you click Next, it'll install. And you'll be through. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go pretty quickly. It took me about seven or eight minutes. I'm guessing that's less than 10 minutes from, from the time I hit run to the time I was rebooting, which I thought was pretty nice. So I've covered one other Gentoo-based distribution called Redcore Linux. And I'll tell you, I... I've run Redcore for about at least a month. It was probably closer to two months. But 
you would have a package updater and it would update or install a package. Then you would go to their uh, CFS store and it wouldn't even show up. So you'd install it and you'd, then you'd have it twice. So it's, it, was, it was a lot of confusion. You had to really think about keeping that stuff straight. Let me bring up a terminal here. I also might add that a lot of the packages that were masked in Gentoo were not masked here, such as Featherpad and PC Man FM. Calculate Linux, XFCE Desktop. All right, this is the 790, Calculate Linux. Graphics, we are not using X Wayland, or Wayland, I'm sorry. Don't even have the X Wayland support right here, from what I can see. Under audio, we are using Pipewire. You could have used ALSA, and they would have said Pulse Audio more than likely. But that's the way it did. Cat OS release. Calculate Linux. Calculate Linux. And, you know, I, I basically got every piece of software that I either require or like to have. I uh, still got a games category that don't have a lot in it yet, but you can see that it's on the way. So Featherpad, GNOME Disk, File Manager, that's Thunark, the default file manager, OBS Studio is up and running right now, Caden Live, Audacity, uh, Krita, System Monitor, that's the GNOME System Monitor, System Screen Recorder, GUVC, and Oracle VirtualBox, Virtual Vert Manager, and GNOME Boxes with Voco Screen. As usual, I've got a pretty substantial list of notes that I've taken, and you can pause the video right here. Let me make this where it's more in the middle and uh, make your own notes about what I installed. First, right off the bat, after we got through updating, I installed the Whisker menu. It comes default with the Applications menu. So you, if you want to change that, you'll have to install it. So I also want to show you sudo merge hyphen s or hyphen hyphen search or search. So let's see. Uh, Think of a program where I have a lot of returns. This, that ought to be just full of returns. <laughs> Package installation was a breeze. So you see how fast that was. And we use a merge just like we do in Gentoo itself. You don't have to learn a different package manager, although you could if you needed to. You name hyphen A for all. Linux calculate 6.139, calculate. Let's see, H top. Let's see what Glance it says. Lances says we're using memory 1.49 gigs. No idea what just happened right there. Yep, 1.15 gigs. So pretty lenient as far as system resources go, considering everything I've been doing. I just closed out like five, six tabs of Firefox. I did it, was able to install Flatpak, no problem whatsoever. And I am using the binary Firefox. Installed VirtualBox. I must say, in Gentoo, you're going to have to do a lot of extra stuff to get VirtualBox up and running. But here, the only thing I had to do was put myself in the uh, VBox group. I didn't even have to load the kernel. It did it itself. When I went to open this file up right here, the VBox driver was already there. So I didn't have to do much of anything.
Uh, same way with uh, known boxes, Burt Manager. Uh, I want to say I didn't have to do anything really there. Yeah, I had to put this uh, in package use. I think we had, I had to, I know I had to do that in Gen 2 as well. So that's going to close out this video. This, I was hoping it was going to be a really quick video about Calculate Linux. To be honest with you, I'm enjoying Calculate Linux a lot better than I am Gen 2. I am grateful that I learned a little bit about Gen 2 and went through several installs, several successful installs, and I learned quite a bit, but I, I can see that knowledge carries right over to Calculate Linux, and Calculate Linux has done a lot of this stuff for me. Can't complain about that. Not for a typical end user. Now, if I was a security guy and was wanting to just bone down my system hard, I would stay right there with Gen 2, I think. Although Calculates probably has the same options. So, anyway, peace out, guys. Thanks for watching. Try Calculate Linux. Bye.